Hey, to all you real estate investors out there, all of you out there buying a house, thinking about buying a house or a vacation home or maybe your first apartment deal, pay attention to this message. My name's Grant Cardone. I own uh, five, almost 5,000 apartments. I've done almost a billion dollars worth of real estate deals over the last 25 years. We currently have about $800 million of assets under management. We have five deals for sale right now, but I probably won't sell them because they provide so much income that just scoring a profit doesn't really make sense. So I know a lot of you out there ask me a lot of questions. Either you saw me on, you can go swimming right now, buddy. Um, maybe you saw me on Bigger Pockets or you ran into me on YouTube. I just finished skiing out here in Deer Valley for 10 days now. I think we've been here 10 days, 10 or 12 days. Oh, my legs are killing me. And Ryan's with me, if you've ever seen any of my videos, Captain Ryan, he's the pilot of the plane and he, he uh, works with me on all the real estate. And he asked me coming in here, he's like, Grant, who taught you, who taught you the real estate game? Like who taught you to invest in real estate? And I said, well, dude, that's a really good question. My dad died when I was 10, so it wasn't him, but I used to watch him, he, he'd drive around and look at real estate with my mom. Then he bought a house right before he died. You know, when you're a kid, you're hearing your parents. You hear everything they say. And he would, he would always talk about real estate being a good deal. And then when my mom, when my mom took over because my dad died, what happened was my mom had to sell that house, the dream house. It wasn't like this kind of dream house. This is a ridiculous house right here. We just rented here for two weeks. And some of you are probably like, why don't you just buy that house rather than paying 150 grand a week for it? I'll tell you why here in a second. See, when my dad died, my mom, literally the next week, had to sell the dream house. She had to sell the dream house. Why? It was paid for. So Dave Ramsey says, you know, never have any, never have any, never have any debt, and then, then you're free. Let me tell you something. If you got to take care of it, you're not free. If you got to fix it, you're not free. If you got property taxes somebody else doesn't pay for, you're not free. If it doesn't provide you with income, income every month, a check every month, you're not free. Because what is freedom really? See, the reason I got into the real estate game was because I had two businesses. One that I was running, I started when I was 29. It was making a lot of money. Comparably, thanks Tom. It was making a lot of money comparably. I'd let the sales job when I was 29, I was making about a hundred grand a year. It took forever too. I was at that job seven years. We started out making 2000 bucks a month. Then finally learned a sales game. One month I made three grand. I'm like, oh wow, I could actually control my income. Then I went to 8,000 a month over the next five or six years. I thought I was the shit. Seriously, I thought, oh, I got it made. But the problem was the guy I was working for, he was kind of getting fat and happy. He had a dude stealing from him. I told him about it. He said, hey, mind your own business. And next thing you know, I'm out of my sales job. I don't have any income. Second thing, second move I made was I started my own business. Pay attention to what I'm telling you right now because I know a lot of you out there thinking about starting your own business or maybe you're in transition. Maybe you got a job. You're trying to figure out how to buy, buy your first apartment deal or your first single family house or you're doing a flip. Pay attention to what I'm telling you because I'm going to save you a lot of money and I'll show you how to make a bunch of money. I took on this first job at 29, started this job, went out on my own, and man, it was work. But I was making, it took me about three years to match the money I had been making. So I was 32 years, 31 years old maybe, and I started making the same kind of money that I was making at that sales job. And then I, boom, I lit this baby up, man. I figured out how to do the deal. I'll save that for another video, how I took my business, started making about a million bucks a year. This is what I did with the money. And this, this message really is for all of you out there that have put some money away. I was stacking money. I was going out in the marketplace. I was working 300 days a year on the road literally leave my home, I was living in Houston, and I would travel around the country 300 days of the year. I was only home 60 days of the year. 
The rest of the time I'm out pitching, pitching and pitching, and it was work. And I knew one thing about this job that I had, this business that I owned. If I wasn't pitching it, I wasn't making money. I was 31, 32 years old, and I was dying. Didn't have a relationship, couldn't have kids, couldn't get married, couldn't stay in a relationship because I was never home. I was out banging, pushing, shoving, hammering, hitting every day, every week. Discouragement, disappointment, score. Discouragement, disappointment, score. And what I would do is I would sack that money away. Now remember, I'm working 300 out of 365 days a year. I can't spend money. Everywhere I'm going, I'm making money and I'm putting it away. But I didn't know what to put it into. Started my second business with a partner. He starts making money. So both businesses start making some money and I end up with a bunch of dough on the side sitting in the bank dying. You know what I mean? When money's dying, when money's dying, that means it's not working, it's not growing, it's not going anyplace. My uncle said to me, one day, son, you need to learn how to get your money to work for you as hard as you work for it. I'm like, oh, that's a good, good piece of advice. You got any, you, 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 can you tell me what to do? He's like, well, I buy these little single family homes, section eight, and I rent them to people, and the government gives me a check. And I'm like, I don't want anything to do with the government. So I started checking out real estate. How can I own real estate? control real estate, use the cash I have in the bank to buy a piece of real estate and have enough tenants pay me a check every month. I didn't do it the way my uncle did it. My uncle did it one house at a time. I did it 100 units at a time. My first deal was 38 units. My second deal was 48 units. My third deal was 90 units. Now we don't even look at deals that size. We, 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 that size. We look at deals 400 units, 500 units. Now why am I telling you this and what should you take away from this? Okay, my first real estate deal was one house. I bought one house, I rented it, and as soon as they moved out, I had problems. I had to sell the house just like my mom had to sell the house. So the first thing I want you to know is this, not all real estate makes you money. This piece of real estate right here, this guy paid 19 million, maybe 20 million bucks to build this house. He's gonna sell it for $16 million, okay? I come here, I, I abuse the damn place for two or three weeks pay the guy 150 or 300 grand for two weeks or three weeks that we stay here and I walk away okay he gets income from one person or eight people a year eight people nine people maybe ten people a year maybe 12 people maybe he rents it every week but he won't do that every year because if it doesn't snow he won't rent it don't buy single-family homes when somebody's not in it, you got to make the paycheck. You got to pay the check, okay? When I rent, when I buy 100 units or 40 units or 30 units, okay? My first deal was 38 units. I never had less than 34 of those 38 units rented. Never did I have less than 34 out of the 38 units rented, which was enough money to pay the, pay the, 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 the note at the bank, to pay for the roof to be fixed, to pay the paint, the tenants, termites the toilets the classified ads the problems so my, my, my mama told me one day she's like you don't want to get in real estate people are gonna be calling you at midnight I'm like I wish somebody would call me I've been busting my ass my whole damn life so somebody would call me god damn if somebody would call me that means they're paying me or they want to pay me so what you gonna do see your parents have half of everything right if they're millionaires they got half of the equation right they got just enough money now to say, hey, I made a bunch of money, I took care of my kids, I got them a college degree, we got a nice house, and if I get a divorce, it's gonna cost me half. That's all a millionaire is. Nobody tells you that though. Nobody tells you that. Look, if you wanna make, if you want real freedom, that's what my dad wanted to provide my mom, real freedom, and he never got there. Because the week after my dad died, my mom had to sell that house. That is not freedom. There was no debt on the house except for the debt that the government puts on every piece of property in America, property taxes, okay? And if you can't pay the property taxes, if you can't pay for the landscaping, if you can't pay to have the lawn mowed, the snow to be picked up and moved, okay? The paint to be fixed, the cedar, the cedar shake that's gonna fall off this place, the roof that's gonna get damaged over some period of time. If you can't fix all that, it's coming out of your pocket, you're gonna be worried when you go to sleep at night. That's why I buy apartments and office buildings because they provide income from multiple tenants at one piece of property. It could be 100 units, 200 units, 500 units. The bigger, the bigger, the more units, the more protection you get. Okay, listen to what I'm telling you. That's one unit. Big, nice, big ass, badass house, right? Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna give them 200 grand, 300 grand. I'm gonna walk away from this place, okay? That one section of the roof over there could cost him 300 grand one year. And it will, by the way. 
That roof will not last forever. It's got a 25-year life. He's got plumbing issues here. He's got electrical, heating in the floors. Okay, you know the bridge is going to be a problem. We got water fountains, swimming pools. That swimming pool has been at 106 degrees since I got here. I'm like, crank that bad boy all the way up. Who do you think's paying the utility bill here? Not me. So look, not all real estate makes you money. The real estate that makes you money is the real estate that produces income every month. Positive cash flow. Cash flow is the holy grail. The holy grail of all finance is cash flow. I have it on my hats. I got it on my sweatshirts. Cash flow is why you want to be involved in real estate. Not pride of ownership. Not, oh my God, I got the best location. Not, oh wow, look at my house and look at my swimming pool and look at this and look at that. Look, man, cash flow is not bragging rights. Cash flow is financial freedom. Cash flow is so you and your family can sleep at night. Cash flow is so that you, if you got a great job or a second great job or you own your own business, you don't have to keep busting your ass every day. What happens when you get sick? What happens when the marketplace changes? What happens when the piece of technology comes along and wipes out your business? Nothing's gonna wipe out the fact that people have to have a place to live. People need a place to rent. People need a warm place to go at night. That's why we focus all our cash flow properties. We focus on 800 to $1,500 a month rents in great markets like Houston, Orlando. We would even look in Salt Lake City. I'm looking at property down here in Salt Lake City right now. We're in Park City right here, this Deer Valley actually. See all these homes right here, this guy? He's got 15 million bucks in his house. That's not an investment. That's dead money. That's dumb money, okay? That's some rich dude. Him and his wife found the house. Oh my God, we love this place. And they built it. They got money to throw away, okay? It doesn't mean it's a good deal. A good deal is this. Pays you every month. The banks don't pay you every month. Your stocks don't pay you every month. Get investments that pay you every month. Bitcoin does not pay you every month. It's not freedom. It does not provide you with financial freedom. It does not provide you with, with financial freedom of worry. I don't want to worry. It's too much drama in life already, man. The last thing I want to do is worry about the damn money. Okay? So my advice to you is this. Get involved in income producing cash flow positive real estate. Don't build it. Buy it. Don't build it, buy it. Stay away from the government. Leave the government Section 8 programs alone. They're nothing but problems. Number three, stay away from single family homes. They're losers. Okay, Two, number four, duplexes and quadplexes, sixplexes and eightplexes. Leave them alone. They have the worst foreclosure record of all real estate. Leave them alone, okay? Your first purchase should be at least 16 units, preferably 32. And you'll have to look at 100 deals. You'll have to look at 100 deals to find two that make sense today. Okay? Then you go to the bank, you get a loan for 75, 65 to 75% of the, the purchase price. Let's say you found 32 units, cost you $3 million, you put 800 grand down and borrow $2.4 million. And you're going to keep that bad boy for the next 10 or 15 or 20 years and you're gonna double or triple your money. If you don't know how to do it, this makes sense to you. It made sense to me, man. I read all those books about all the tycoon, ty tycoons, the JP Morgans, the Rockefellers, they all ended up with real estate. Funny thing is all the real estate they owned produced income, all of it, okay? Ray Kroc, Ray Kroc's play on McDonald's was not the hamburgers, it wasn't the recipes, it was the real estate. Control the real estate, you control the income, then you got the cash flow. And cash flow, cash flow is the holy grail. It is the holy grail. Amazon is a cash flow company, okay? Netflix, cash flow company. Cash flow companies will always be more valuable than those that don't produce cash flow. So the way for you and I to do that, see if my mama, if my mama would have sold the house and started buying apartments the week after my dad died, my mom would have been a multimillionaire. She probably would have been worth 20 or $30 million. Instead, my mama worried for the next 40 years about the little bit of life insurance money my daddy left. See, your parents only know half the truth, folks. They know how to make money. They know how to save money. Most of them know how to save money. But they don't know how to, the third piece. They don't know how to produce the income. I remember my mom telling me, you want people calling you? You want people calling you at night? And I said, man, I, I wish they would call me. 
That's the dumbest thing I ever heard, Mom. She told me, she said, don't get involved in real estate. Something bad's going to happen. Something's going bad. Something, something bad's going to happen if you don't get involved in real estate, folks. You need the income next month, the following month, next year, the following year. Imagine that every month you got a paycheck from 5,000 units. Do the math. It's 1,500 bucks a month. Do the math. Let's say only, let's say only 95% of them are rented. Do the math. Okay? Now, you can ride on the deal. My brother invests with me. My sister invests with me. My mother-in-law invests with me. Elena invests with me. Good friends, close friends, great clients of mine invest with me at Cardone Capital. If you want to be involved in doing the right thing with real estate, learn how to double and triple your money and make cash flow while you wait for the double and the triple. Some of this stuff, some of this real estate, we might not, not might never sell. Pay attention, man. This is not real estate right here. This is luxury bullshit. See this? This is what rich people do when they're bored and they need a place to go to, or they're like, hey, let's buy a house up in the mountains. We're gonna be happy. I would never buy this house. I'd rent it though. I don't know that I'd rent it again, but it is nice. Probably the nicest house I've ever been in. Okay, look, hey, I appreciate you watching. If you have questions, post them below. I'm happy to answer your questions. Maybe you're looking at your first deal. Maybe you got a deal you need to sell. Maybe you got a bunch of deals and you're trying to put them together. Maybe you bought a single family home. You're like, man, I shouldn't have done that. I'll help you get out of it, okay? I do a show every Monday on real estate, how to invest in real estate. My YouTube channel is slammed with a bunch of real estate advice. There's also a podcast that you can grab on iTunes, Real Estate Investing Made Simple. If you like this kind of information, let me know, post below. I'm on my vacation, but I wanna help you. I wanna help correct. I wanna give you that, that other half of the information that your mommy and daddy might not have had. I know your teacher didn't have it. She, he'd have been buying real estate himself. I remember my accounting, my accounting teacher in college, he had a duplex. His name was Charlie Whitman. I said, Charlie, why don't you have 50 of these? He just didn't think big enough. I don't want all that trouble. Dude, everybody's got trouble. What kind of trouble you want? You want 50 units, 500 units, or you want one or two units? One or two units is nothing but trouble, nothing but problems, okay? Hey, God bless, be great. Post your comments below. If you like it, let me know.